good afternoon everybody <coughs> uh, welcome to this 3d t course uh, first of all i want to thank organizing committee for inviting me and especially from dr moreno that gave me this chance and the topic that dr moreno gave it to me is a 3d acquisition theory other structure i asked him what are the other structure and he told me okay the, the uh, valves are covered by other speakers and you concentrate mainly on intellectual septum so i'm going to talk about 3dt acquisition for intellectual septum svc ivc pulmonary veins coronary sinus and maybe a little bit left atrial appendage this is the diagrammatic representation of interactual septum and this is the diagram that uh, we can use a lot during our 3d acquisition here in this uh, part you can see the septum from the right side and from the right side when you see you see mainly the septum secundum and fossa ovalis, and this is the coronary sinus, and this is Eustachian valve. And you can see the SVC at the top and left, and aorta at the top and right. So SVC is like uh, 11 o'clock here. So we use this landmark when we display the 3D from the right side. This is the interactive septum from the left side. And as you see from left side, you see mainly the septum primum fused with the septum secundum for ovalis. You see a little bit part of the septum secundum from the top. And in this view, you see that SVC is around like a 12 to 1 o'clock. And pulmonary vein, you are not seeing here, the right, pulmonary, uh, right upper pulmonary vein is around 1 o'clock. Uh, and again we use that one the pulmonary vein as our landmark when we show the uh, interactive septum from the left side uh, this is again another diagram just showing the interactive septum and how when the between septum primum and septum secundum they are not fused together you will see the pfo This is again like a 3D image of the heart. This is from cadaver. And you can see all chambers and how is the orientation of the interactual septum. This is the IVC. And IVC is the most posterior structure of the heart. So IVC is a landmark for anything that we are looking for posterior, like a posterior fluid of the tricuspid valve should be beside the IVC. This is orientation between mitral valve and tricuspid valve and again intractual septum. Here you can see it and you can see the aorta is wedged between uh, two valves. So this anatomic uh, feature of the heart is very important to do the TE and to learn the TE. So uh, a good T 3D T person should be a good anatomist. For acquisition of intractual septum, 3D of that, first we do our 2D T picture in bicaval view. So SVC is in our right side, IVC is our left side, LA is at top, and you can see the intractual septum. If we use the 3D zoom in this view, uh, we can see the septum very well. We like to get the septum uh, 3D, we'd like to acquire it at 90 degree. That's a view that we are perpendicular to the intractual septum and we have a better resolution. Also, you can acquire it in zero degree and rotate the picture, but I believe and many people and the guideline believe that we should do it at 90 degree to have a better 
a special resolution for intraarterial septum. So this is a either zoom acquisition or full volume. This is a full volume. This is an old machine. This is 3D that I did in 2012. So you can see the SVC here. You can see the RA. You can see the trichus with valve down. You see part of the IVC and LA and right PA here. And you might see the pulmonary vein here. It is very important to notice that SVC and IVC, they are not exactly in the same plane. As I told at the beginning, SVC is more anterior and IVC is more posterior. This is very important to know that in bicaval view, of when you do the 3D, if you have a AST in this area, you might not see the rim of the IVC properly. It doesn't mean that the rim is not there, that you don't just don't, don't see it because IVC is more posterior. So it's very difficult to bring IVC and IVC and SVC in the same view. That's the reason that uh, many uh, interventions, especially, they prefer to use intracardiac echo to see the, for example, uh, atrial septum to do intervention on the ASD. Because by intracardiac, you can see the IVC better. The view that I showed you at the beginning is mainly echo view, but this is the surgical view. The way that the surgeon will see the intraarterial septum is this way. IVC is in the right side of the surgeon and SVC in the left side of the surgeon. Left atrium is down and this is the right atrium. So this is the surgeon's view of the intraarterial septum. You can rotate the picture and see it in a different way. So the first guideline of uh, 3D acquisition and display of the 3D TE picture came in 2012. Uh, also, we were doing 3D TE before that. I actually started to do 3D TE 2000, from 2008. So this guideline was published in 2012. You can see all the big names and pioneer of the 3D uh, there, like a Dr. Lang from Chicago, that we learned everything about 3D in North America, especially from him. <clears throat> Dr. Luigi Bodano from Europe, now he's in Milan, and he is the main pioneer of 3D in the Europe. And you can see Dr. Tasang Wendy, uh, that we are very lucky to have her with us now. Uh, I think she was a fellow in that time, probably. Uh, and so we are lucky to have uh, Windy beside us. And uh, David Adams <coughs> is a cardiac surgeon. He was the president of uh, uh, WATS uh, last year. He's from Mount Sinai. And here you can see my friend, Dr. Francesco Faletro. He is from Switzerland. And I took lots of image that I'm talking now from him. So the first uh, 3D TE probe uh, came in the market in 2008 and in that year <coughs> Dr. Roberto Lang had two uh, workshops in Chicago uh, to introduce the 3D uh, and with uh, Dr. Uh, Lisa Segang and I attended both of these two workshops. Uh, so, the, one of this I remember was from uh, Live OR, uh, so in 2008, and I, I, we bought the probe in Saudi Arabia, we had good money at that time, and we started to do 3D in 2008, uh, from that time, and gradually, uh, I gained more experience, also, I always learned from Dr. Lang and Dr. Badano in different meetings, but I, I tried to... Uh, upgrade my knowledge in 3D from 2008 in Saudi Arabia, mainly by our surgeon, Dr. Hani Najam, he's in Cleveland now. Uh, we did lots of work together. We did lots of dissection on the ship heart and the camel heart to learn, to learn the orientation of the valves and to make everything uh, surgically oriented. Uh, we, we made a very good collection 
and I published like a five, six chapters in different textbooks of uh, uh, Echo, all about uh, 3D. So this is the displaying the interceptum based on the recommendation of uh, American Society of Echo. When we show it from the right side, our SVC should be at 11 o'clock. And when we show from the left side, our pulmonary vein, right upper pulmonary vein, should be at 1 o'clock. This is short animation showing the same, displaying the interceptum. This patient has a large uh, secondum AST as well. So you see this is from the right side. And here is the SVC at the top. We'll go to like 11 o'clock. Okay, and this is the large AST. And when we rotate it to, the, to see from the left side, our right upper pulmonary vein should go to the one o'clock. This is a one full volume acquisition of interceptum and SVC IVC, and that's how we optimize the images. We use all the tips and tricks that Dr. Moreno talked about that this morning. Gain should not be too much high, too much down, compression, brightness, smoothing X-rays, and I think that Moreno talked about all of this and how we do cropping. We can crop it from different aspect and we can uh, see it in this is the RA. This is uh, IVC. You can see the coronary sinus here. This is a very nice paper from one of my friends, uh, Dr. Mahmoud from Saudi Arabia, about displaying the interceptum. And he used a special maneuver. I, I saw some other people are using different maneuver. Uh, he called it Rattle 90. So this is the interceptum. Take it as a box and then two times, uh, one time rotation, one time tilting to show the SVC at the top. And this is a short movie that he put it there. And you can see that he will take the uh, septum as his uh, zoom mode. And this is septum at the zoom mode. And then acquire the full volume. Doesn't matter if it's a full volume or a zoom mode. One bit or four bits. And then rotate the picture and make the SVC at the top. So I believe it's a good uh, maneuver, but the important is see the right, the septum from right side when the SVC is at the top. There are some challenges to show the intraretal septum. One is the aneurysm of intraretal septum. When we have an aneurysm, because our frame rate is low compared to the uh, 2 dt we might see a hole here but this is not the real hole this is because of a low temporal resolution this is from ra side and you see like a hole here but there's no ast in this case this is an artifact drop out mainly because of low temporal resolution. Temporal resolution here is only 10. This is another challenge when we have a lipomatous hypertrophy of intraterior septum. So this is a lipomatous hypertrophy of the septum. When we show it by X-plane, you can see like a dumbbell-shaped appearance of the septum. The first of all is spared. This is one of the challenges during the septal puncture because if the catheter might go inside this fatty part and if you use only one view, we might not see it. 
So always we should use uh, X plane to see the perpendicular image that uh, shows that catheter is not going outside of the heart. So this X plane is very important. And the second image of the X plane is perpendicular to the first one and is right and left reversed. We have to be careful about that one. Septal puncture is part of the many intervention in the left side. So we have to be familiar how we do the puncture of the septal. This is the catheter pushing the iterator septum, tenting, and we can see this tenting in a two view. This is the catheter came out to the left side. Uh, during the mitoclip, I know Dr. Max is talking about mitoclip today, so I show only two three cases about the septum. So this is septal puncture. Septal puncture should be superior, about four centimeter away from the closure of the mitral valve, and posterior, away from the aorta, about 2.5 centimeter. So again, explain is very very important. So this one shows the catheter, and the catheter should be around 1.5 to 2 centimeters inside the LA. The best way to see the guiding catheter and the clip is using, again, the 3D. And this is the catheter. Clip is coming from RA to LA. Septal puncture during the left atrial appendage close. Again, it is very important to look at the anatomy of the uh, appendage before the procedure. Appendage should be clean. And this, for example, this another patient has a smoke in the appendage. So we should not do a puncture during that time, the procedure. This is another case with a large clot in the appendage. This is a laminar clot in the left atrial appendage. The laminar clot sometimes is difficult to differentiate with pectinal muscle, but and 3D and x plane are very helpful. Uh, how we do the septal puncture during the appendage closure? Uh, we should be posterior, but we don't need to go superior for like a mitral valve clip. So posterior and inferior goes directly to the appendage and this is after the device this is the watchman is sitting in the appendage I know watchman device is not very popular these days but it was very popular in the past a septal puncture during mitral balloon valvuloplasty again the valvuloplasty the septal puncture should be done from the fossa ovalis and this is the balloon is coming from RA to LA and we are seeing as a live uh, we do sometimes uh, mitral balloon valvuloplasty by 3D live but many times the expert interventionist they do by fluoroscopy so this is a very nice inflation of the balloon and this is the Fluoroscopy, as I said, uh, many interventions, they just use fluoroscopy. This is an Inouye balloon that is widely used, especially in the Middle East, for rheumatic mitral stenosis. Anatomy of the pulmonary vein uh, by 3D. Dr. Fletra uh, is publishing lots of paper about this, uh, about different aspects of the 3D, especially intellectual septum and the pulmonary vein ablation in their center they use the live 3d to do ablation so that's the way that we can see the left uh, upper pulmonary vein the left low uh, the left upper pulmonary vein is just beside the appendage and there is a, a ridge here we call it lateral ridge or left lateral ridge uh, or we call it comadin rich. That's a space here. If this space is very big, it means the patient has a left SVC. 
So this is the how we show the left upper pulmonary vein and left lower. Left lower is a little bit more difficult, but still we can show it. Even we can show the long axis of the left upper and left lower. They come like a Y to the A. And this is a right upper and right lower. Again, we can show it very well by 3D. This is how we show the coronary sinus by 3D. And this is the one of the real anatomy of the coronary sinus when we open the right atrium in a patient that has a, a TR. So in summary, the intraatrial septum is more than a simple partition dividing the two atria and 3DT enables consistent visualization of the intraatrial septum and surrounding atrial walls from both the left and right perspective. Spectacular accuracy of 3D images proved by equivalent uh, displays of anatomic specimens and the clear definition of the border of the specimen of septum should encourage its use during interventional procedures for left heart pathologies such as transcatheter mitral valve repair or replacement, left atrial appendage device closure, and catheter based pulmonary vein ablation. Uh, thank you very much. I hope uh, I will show you more the intraatrial septum and AST in my next talk. That's mainly a surgical talk. Thank you very much.